This is the Netherlands, and this is the Kingdom of the Netherlands. The Kingdom of the Netherlands includes the European country of the Netherlands, the special municipalities of Bonaire, St. Eustatius, and Saba, as well as the constituent countries of Curaçao, Aruba, and St. Martin. This large distinction between the Netherlands and the Kingdom of the Netherlands is relatively unknown to most people. So, this video will explore the differences between the two, as well as the deep histories of each individual Dutch Caribbean island. The European country of the Netherlands consists of 12 provinces, as well as three special municipalities, the Caribbean islands of Bonaire, St. Eustatius, and Saba. The Netherlands itself, however, is a constituent country of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, along with the island nations of Curaçao, Aruba, and St. Martin. These four nations form the Greater Kingdom of the Netherlands, much like the constituent nations of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland form the United Kingdom. Each of these nations are self-governing for the most part. However, all four of their governments are subordinate to the Charter for the Kingdom of the Netherlands. All six of these islands are classified as overseas countries or territories by the European Union, meaning they are not part of the EU or the single market, but rather members of the Overseas Countries and Territories Association. The goal of this association is to improve economic development of overseas countries and territories, as well as increase cooperation between the islands and EU member states. As I'm sure you're well aware of the nation of the Netherlands, let's begin with the entity that led to the Dutch roots of all of these islands the Dutch West India Company. The Dutch West India Company was a chartered company of Dutch merchants and foreign investors formed to carry out trade with the islands of the West Indies. The company played a major role in the slave trade. However, more importantly relating to the modern Dutch islands of the Caribbean, established several colonies throughout the New World. These would include regions of both of the Americas, as well as the modern Dutch Caribbean islands of Curaçao, Aruba, St. Martin, Bonaire, St. Eustatius, and Saba, among others. However, following the Fourth Anglo-Dutch War, the Dutch West India Company declined to control. The company's stock was eventually bought out by the Dutch government, and the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1814 was signed at the Convention of London between the Dutch and the British. This returned control of all six previously Dutch islands to the Netherlands. However, the nation lost control of several other settlements that would later form the colony of British Guyana. These once again Dutch colonies were organized into two groups, Curaçao independencies, comprising of Curaçao, Aruba, and Bonaire, as well as St. Eustatius independencies, comprising of St. Eustatius, St. Martin, and Saba. These colonies would exist separately for a short period of time, however was shortly combined into a single colony of sorts in 1828, ruled from Suriname. This would be the state of things until, in 1845, Curaçao independencies would once again become separate from Suriname, now including both its previous islands, as well as the islands ruled under St. Eustatius independencies. The final governmental body ruling the Dutch Caribbean before independence was the successor to Curaçao independencies, the Netherlands Antilles. This was a constituent country of the Kingdom of the Netherlands founded in 1954, containing all six islands of the Dutch Caribbean. The Netherlands Antilles, the Netherlands proper, and Suriname, the only remaining territory of Dutch Guyana, all had equal power in the Kingdom of the Netherlands under the new negotiations for the Charter of the Kingdom. Despite Aruba's secession in 1986, the other islands would remain within the Netherlands Antilles. Each island held a referendum between June of 2000 and April of 2005, voting on whether they should become closer to the Netherlands, remain within the Netherlands Antilles, become autonomous as a country of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, or complete independence. Despite these referendums, the country would exist until as recently as 2010, when it was dissolved entirely. Now that we understand the overall history of the political classifications of these Dutch islands, Let's take a closer look at each island's history individually.
Curacao is the largest Dutch Caribbean island, both population and land-wise. With an approximate 150,000 inhabitants and a land area of 444 square kilometers. Curacao, like many Caribbean islands, was first settled by a group of Arawak people, native to northern Venezuela. The first European explorers would arrive in 1499 in the form of Spaniard Alonso de Ojeda and Italian Amerigo Vespucci. Spanish settlers would be the first Europeans to inhabit Curacao, enslaving the majority of the native Arawak population, relocating a large portion to nearby colonies in need of laborers. In the late 1620s and early 1630s, as the Eighty Years' War raged on between the Dutch and the Spanish, the Dutch West India Company would take several steps in securing Caribbean territory, including that of Curacao. The first of these would occur in the Bay of Matanzas, Cuba, where the Dutch West India Company would capture a Spanish treasure fleet, consolidating the Dutch dominance of the seas over the Spanish in the West India Company's greatest Caribbean victory. This dominance would be furthered when the Dutch would seize the island of Curacao from the Spanish in 1636, founding several Dutch settlements, including a portion of the main center of Williamstead, the modern capital and largest city of the island. Within this city, the Dutch would begin construction on Fort Amsterdam, which would serve not only as a military fort, but also as the headquarters of the Dutch West India Company. This fort stands to this day and serves as the seat of government of Curacao. The primary economic activity on the island at this time was related to the slave trade, growing the island into a major hub where over 100,000 slaves would be sold. Around this time, the first Jewish immigrant to settle on Curacao, Samuel Cohen, arrived on board a Dutch fleet in 1634. A significant influx of Jewish immigrants would follow, playing a key role in the island's early economy. The oldest continually used synagogue in the Americas was founded by this community. However, in the modern day, the remaining Jewish population on Curacao sits at around 350. A century later, Curacao would experience a period of instability due to the dissolution of the Dutch West India Company in, in 1791. Four years later, the island's largest slave revolt would occur at Kenapa Plantation, led by Tula, a local slave. Now known as the Curacao Slave Revolt of 1795, it created a month-long skirmish between the European settlers and African slaves. In the end, the Dutch were able to suppress this movement, publicly executing the leader and organizer, Tula. The government did, however, provide the slave population with limited rights due to the event. Curacao would experience 15 years of instability following this, being captured by the British and becoming a protectorate in 1800. The British would hold the island for less than two years, until the Dutch briefly returned to power in 1802. The island was once again captured by the British in 1807, and finally, once and for all, returned to the Dutch in 1815 under the terms of the Treaty of Paris of 1815. 68 years after the slave revolt of 1795, slavery would be abolished on Curacao in 1863. Despite the economic downturn following this, the economy would once again gain momentum after the discovery of oil in Venezuela, which Curacao played a part in the refining of. Royal Dutch Shell, commonly known simply as Shell, would construct an oil refinery on the island in 1915. As Curacao was a major supplier of oil to the Allies in the Second World War, it would be attacked by German forces in 1942, in what is now known as the Bombardment of Curacao. The Germans would be unsuccessful in their goal, failing to destroy or ignite the petroleum. The island would be made the seat of government of the Netherlands Antilles in 1954. Curacao would hold a referendum regarding its status in April of 2005 voting in favor of becoming an autonomous constituent country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands. This would not become reality until, in 2010, the Netherlands Antilles would be dissolved. This remains the political status of Curacao today. Aruba is the second largest Dutch Caribbean island population-wise, with an approximate 115,000 inhabitants. The island has a land area of 180 square kilometers, making it the third largest behind Curaçao and Bonaire. Aruba, like its neighboring island of Curaçao, was first settled by Arawaks of northern Venezuela. Also in parallel to Curaçao, the first European to discover the island was Spaniard Alonso de Ojeda and Italian Amerigo Vespucci in 1499, claiming the island for Spain. Ojeda would be appointed as the first governor of the island nine years later by the Spanish crown. 
the native population would be forced into slavery by the Spanish settlers, the majority of which were sent to the island of Hispaniola to work in mines and on plantations. The island would remain under Spanish control until 1636, when Aruba was captured by the Dutch at the same point in time as Curacao, forming part of the Dutch West India Company. From this point on, the island's history is roughly the same as Curacao's, occupied by the British, returned to the Dutch, British, and finally Dutch again, joining the Netherlands and Tilly some 29 years later. Gold and guano deposits would be discovered around this time, becoming important parts of the island's economy. The first oil refinery and airport would be constructed in 1928 and 1935 respectively. This period of relative peace would end with the beginning of the Second World War. Despite the Netherlands being captured by the Nazis, Aruba, and the other islands of the Dutch Caribbean, would continue to provide supplies to the Allies. The most predominant resource provided by Aruba was oil, leading German and Italian forces to successfully attack the island's oil refineries in 1942. Following the war and into the 1970s and 80s, Aruba would see serious independence movements calling for a split from the Netherlands Antilles. This was spearheaded by the People's Electoral Movement, a political party founded in 1971 which continues to hold power in Aruba today. This separation would occur on January 1, 1986 at midnight, when the island officially became a constituent country of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. This was intended to remain the case for 10 years, when Aruba was set to become a fully independent nation. However, this never occurred. Aruba would be joined by Curaçao and St. Martin on October 10th of 2010, when the Netherlands Antilles was dissolved entirely and both islands became constituent countries. St. Martin is the third largest Dutch Caribbean island population-wise, and the fourth largest land-wise. With an approximate 40,000 inhabitants and a land area of 34 square kilometers. The island was first settled by Arawak Native Americans in the 9th century. St. Martin would be discovered by Europeans in 1493, when Christopher Columbus arrived on his second voyage to the New World. The date was November 11th, making it the feast day of St. Martin of Tours. Due to this, Columbus would name the island, Island of St. Martin, in Spanish, and claim it for the Spanish. Despite this claim, the island would be settled by two other European powers, the French and the Dutch. The Dutch colony on Great Bay would be established in 1631 to collect salt, while the French cultivated tobacco across the northern area of the island. The Spanish Navy would attempt to protect their claim, first by capturing Dutch territory and constructing the first military fort on the island. As the Spanish eventually abandoned their claims, the French and Dutch formally claimed the island. The two European powers partitioned the island in 1648 through the Treaty of Concordia. This would establish St. Martin, the Dutch portion of the island, and St. Martin, the French portion of the island. This border would not be stable, however, as conflict would alter it 16 times between 1648 and 1816. The first change came when the French occupied the entire island from 1679 to 89. A Dutch zone, established under the Dutch West India Company, would be created in 1689, lasting until 1792. The English would come to occupy the entire island from 1690 to 1699. The French again from 99 to 1702. The Dutch again, French, British, Dutch, French, British, you get the picture. This ever-fluctuating border issue would be resolved in 1816, when the originally agreed upon Dutch and French zones were restored. Saba, St. Eustatius, and St. Martin would be united as the Netherlands' Windward Islands in 1919. These islands are considered part of the Leeward Islands in English, however are considered Windward Islands by the Dutch. The island would remain under this classification until 1954, when it joined Curaçao, Aruba, Bonaire, St. Eustatius, and Saba as the Netherlands Antilles. Forty years later, the Kingdom of the Netherlands and France would sign the Franco-Dutch Treaty on St. Martin border controls, creating stricter border controls for both sides of the island, most importantly in the form of requiring aliens landing at airports on either side of the island have the proper visas from both the French and Dutch. 
the status of the island would once again change in 2000. When a referendum would end in the majority voting to become an autonomous constituent country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands, similar to Curaçao and Aruba. This would become reality when, in 2010, the Netherlands Antilles was dissolved, placing St. Martin where it is today. Bonaire is the fourth largest island of the Dutch Caribbean population-wise, however is far and away the largest special municipality of the Netherlands, with an approximate 19,000 inhabitants, meaning it's 6.3 times more populated than St. Eustatius. The island has a land area of 288 square kilometers, making it the second largest of the Dutch Caribbean overall. The island's first inhabitants would arrive in around 1000 AD, in the form of Arawak Native Americans. Alonso de Ojeda and Amerigo Vespucci would be the first Europeans to arrive in 1499, claiming the island for Spain. Similarly to other Dutch Caribbean islands, the native people were sent to neighboring islands to work as slaves, as the island had neither gold deposits or the proper climate for agriculture. By 1515, most of the island had been depopulated. The Dutch West India Company was founded in 1621 using Bonaire to obtain resources and attempting to conquer the island from the Spanish. Bonaire would become a plantation island under the Dutch West India Company, as well as a military base in 1634. It was entirely conquered by the Dutch in 1636, and developed salt production shortly thereafter. The Dutch West India Company would be dissolved in 1791, transferring ownership of the company's slaves to the Kingdom of the Netherlands as government slaves. Throughout the Napoleonic Wars, the Dutch lost control of Bonaire to the British on two separate occasions, first from 1800 to 1803, and again from 1807 to 1816. It was the Anglo-Dutch Treaty of 1814 that would end the British occupation of Bonaire. The island remained a government-owned plantation until 1862, when the Emancipation Regulation freed 607 government slaves and 151 privately owned slaves. The government auctioned the majority of the publicly owned land remaining on the island five years later. During the German occupation of the Netherlands during the Second World War, the island became a protectorate of the United States and the United Kingdom. Following the war, Bonaire was returned to Dutch control, however was granted political autonomy as a protectorate. The island would continue to have a strong economy, with the Bonaire Beach Hotel opening in 1962, Transworld Radio beginning to broadcast from Bonaire in 1964, salt production resuming in 1966, and the Bonaire Petroleum Corporation opening a terminal for oil shipping in 1975. Following the dissolution of the Netherlands Antilles in 2010, Bonaire became a special municipality of the Netherlands. The island adopted the US dollar as its currency in the following year along with St. Eustatius and Saba. St. Eustatius, also known as Stacia, is the second least inhabited and the second smallest island of the Dutch Caribbean, only trailed by Saba in both aspects. St. Eustatius has an approximate population of 3,000, 1,000 greater than Saba, and a land area of 21 square kilometers, compared to Saba's 13 square kilometers. The first inhabitants of the island migrated from Venezuela throughout the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean. The first European to sail near St. Eustatius was Columbus, on his second voyage in 1493. However, he was unable to view the island due to poor visibility conditions. The island would first be colonized by the Chamber of Zealand of the Dutch West India Company, originally naming the island New Zealand before renaming it to its modern name of St. Eustatius. The Dutch would quickly begin to utilize the newly discovered land, sending the first shipment of St. Eustatius-grown tobacco to the Netherlands in 1638. In the following year, the Dutch would construct Fort Aranya in what is now the capital and largest city of St. Eustatius bearing its name, Aranyastad. The island continued to be controlled by the Dutch until 1672, when the Franco-Dutch War broke out. The English sided with the French, giving them an opportunity to seize control of St. Eustatius. 
This territory was held by the English until 1678, when the treaties of Nijmegen were signed and returned the island to the Dutch West India Company. Due to the island's location near the center of the Danish, British, French, and Spanish empires in the New World, it became a neutral, free port with no customs and ignored trade embargoes, allowing the island's economy to flourish, as well as giving the island the name the Golden Rock. Due to this neutral standpoint, St. Eustatius became one of the only locations the early United States was able to obtain large amounts of military arms. On November 16, 1776, Captain Isaiah Robinson of the Andrew Doria, sailing in the waters near Fort Aranya, was flying the 13-star American flag and fired a 13-gun salute. The governor of St. Eustatius would respond with an 11-gun salute, as this was customary when acknowledging a sovereign flag. Now known as the First Salute, this event was the first international recognition of American sovereignty. The British took this event seriously, declaring war on the Netherlands in 1780 and capturing the island in the following year, quickly deporting most of the Jewish population, around 10% of the island's inhabitants, to St. Kitts, followed shortly by the deportation of Americans, Amsterdam merchants, and Dutch and French citizens. The British once again lost control of the island, however with St. Eustatius now under French authority. The Dutch regained their territory in 1784, holding the island to this day. St. Eustatius, Saba, and St. Martin were unified as the Netherlands Windward Islands in 1919, which were then unified with Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao in 1954 as the Netherlands Antilles. The island held a referendum in 2005 resulting in 77% of the voters wishing to remain within the Netherlands Antilles. Instead, the island became a special municipality of the Netherlands, along with Bonaire and Saba, when the Netherlands Antilles was dissolved in 2010. The island adopted the US dollar as its official currency in the following year. Saba is the least populated and smallest island in the Dutch Caribbean, with a mere 2,000 inhabitants and a land area of approximately 13 square kilometers. The earliest inhabitants of Saba were Caribs, followed by Arawak Native Americans. Columbus would later sight the island in 1493, however made no attempt to land due to its rocky, volcanic shores. The first Europeans to land on the island was a group of shipwrecked Englishmen who reported the island uninhabited despite modern evidence of a Native American presence. Dutch settlers from the neighboring St. Eustatius were sent to Saba to colonize the island for the Dutch West India Company. However, were evicted to St. Martin by Thomas Morgan in 1664, after refusing to swear allegiance to the British. In the following two decades, the island switched hands numerous times between the Dutch, French, and English. The British would first claim the island in 1665, during the Third Anglo-Dutch War. The island would return to the Dutch with the Treaty of Nijmegen in 1678. The French claimed the island in 1689, however quickly abandoned it. During the 18th century, the major industries of the island would be sugar, indigo, and rum production. The island also became a haven for pirates of sorts particularly those from Jamaica. The British once again claimed the island during the American Revolutionary War, and occupied it throughout the Napoleonic Wars from 1810 to 1816. The island officially became Dutch following the conclusion of the Napoleonic Wars, becoming part of the Dutch Windward Islands in 1919 along with St. Martin and St. Eustatius. Savile would become part of the Netherlands Antilles in 1954, along with the other Dutch Caribbean islands. The island's first airport was completed in 1963, helping boost the tourism industry on Saba. The waters surrounding the island were designated the Saba National Marine Park in 1987, as to preserve its renowned coral reefs. With a land area of 13 square kilometers, this national park is approximately the same size as the island itself. Saba would hold a status referendum on November 5th, 2004 during which 86% of the population voted for closer ties to the Netherlands. Following the dissolution of the Netherlands Antilles in 2010, 
the island became a special municipality of the Netherlands. Sabo adopted the US dollar as its currency in 2011, along with Bonaire and St. Eustatius. So that's the Kingdom of the Netherlands. 17 million people spanning three constituent countries in the Caribbean, as well as one constituent country in Northern Europe with 12 provinces and three special municipalities. This is Morinthi. Thanks for watching. Thank you.